But why do we test this initially with chametz on Passover? To the point that some of the laws are super strict, stricter than almost any other of our laws. Uh, if it, even if a little bit gets uh, mixed with our mixtures, you, the whole thing, you can't eat it. It's not often like that. It's just one in 60. So why are we so against chametz? That's what I want to talk about. So one, ex- there's four explanations. And the last one I want to just touch on because I think it could help us as we prepare for Passover. First explanation is that uh, we're trying to reenact the Passover experience. In Egypt, the Jews left, uh, this appears in the Haggadah, the Jews left in haste and their bread couldn't bake. And so they carried matzah. So we want to reenact it. This is kind of like a pro matzah approach. We remove the chametz because we want to reenact what it was like to be in Passover with the matzah. Another explanation is a really interesting one by the Maharal of Prague. He says that on Passover, matzah and chametz are different. How are they different? It takes longer to make chametz. The, the dough rises. Matzah symbolizes our overcoming the, the laws of nature and time. The miracle of Passover was above nature. So we want to live in that reality. So that's why we stay away from chametz and we, we stick to matzah. So we want to be above nature and above time. It takes time for chametz to, to rise. Both of these approaches are good and you can use them kind of to connect to the holiday, but they don't really explain why we're so aggressively against chametz. They explain why we, why we want to go, why we want to put the emphasis on matzah. So these two last explanations I think are helpful in that regard. Um, this, this is an interesting explanation. I don't know if many of you have even heard, the, heard it before and I don't even know if it's actually historically accurate. But it says in Encyclopedia Britannica that the Egyptians discovered, um, invented yeast. What do you think of that? The Egyptians invented yeast. I don't know. But it says that they, they meaning people were baking bread for forever. But they apparently discovered that allowing wheat doughs to ferment, thus forming gases, produced a light expanded loaf. Okay, so... When the Jews, so that's why the Jews were so against chametz. This was the this was their creation, and the Jews wanted to stay as far as they could away from Egypt and away from their inventions and their creations and everything that was associated with the Egyptians. Perhaps like their their um, enslavement, their uh, overpowering other all their negative traits. This was like one of their central inventions, according to this. The final explanation which I should think would be helpful as we prepare for Passover is what appears in the in the Talmud in the Gemara. It says that. The chametz, um, chametz symbol is symbolizes our yetzahara. Something that's extra, right? It takes time for the for for dough to rise and, and to become chametz. Similarly, our egos expand and they inflate, and that can withhold us from achieving true freedom on Passover, the holiday of freedom. So I think this approach, this fourth one, is like it's one that's talked about the most. But I think that this is actually a very helpful one as you prepare. So now we're going to start preparing our homes for Pesach, start cleaning. Removing, removing chametz. This is something you can think about as you do it. Think about it. Think about like what's, what's, what part of yourself is a little bit, of your ego perhaps is a little inflated. And as you remove the chametz, think about ways that you can remove that from inside yourself. I think this could be very powerful and helpful as you remove the chametz. It could be like a, kind of like a spiritual experience, not just you physically working, but spiritually working with intention as you remove the chametz. And through that, you slowly, slowly remove more and more of that ego or of the negative piece of yourself that you feel is a little bit extra. That's withholding you from being free internally. And as you do that, you remove it and slowly, slowly, you can get to a point where you even burn it and completely remove it. I don't know if you can ever completely remove it, but really take a large step towards overcoming something specific. So that's like some internal work that you could focus on as you remove Hamas based on the fourth, um, fourth approach to why, why you remove Hamas.